You know who has a plan B? Motherfuckers that lose. That's a fact, okay? Every single person that wins big, every single person that you look at, every single person that you're inspired by, every single person that you aspire to be like, they only have one motherfucking plan, and that is they are gonna win or they are gonna die fucking trying, okay? All these people out there talking about, oh, well, if that doesn't work out, I'll just go back to this, whatever the fuck this is, which happens to be their miserable life they have now, all right? Those people always lose, and I'll tell you why. There's a real easy reason to understand. Because the people who go all in, the motherfuckers who burn the ships and leave themselves no other option but success, those people are dedicating all their skills, all their resources, all their energy into producing a specific outcome. And if you're competing against someone who's going all in with every resource they have, and you're only going half in because you're half in and you're half fucking out, guess what? You're gonna lose. So you guys out there with your plan B mentality, you need to take that shit, crumple it up, and set it on fucking fire. Because all it's gonna get you is more of what you already have. I hate plan B. <laughs> And I tell you why, because we have so many doubters, as I've said earlier, the, the no-sayers. We have so many of those people that say no and you can't do it, it's impossible. That is okay because we just turn off, as I said earlier, and we listen and we hear the no being a yes, you can't do it, do it, you can't do it, and all that. So that, that is possible to do that amongst all the negative people around you. But when you start doubting yourself, that's very dangerous. Because now what you're basically saying is, is that if my plan doesn't work, I have a fallback plan, I have a plan B. That means that you start thinking about plan B and every thought that you put into plan B you're taking away now that thought, that energy from plan A. And, and it's very important to understand that we function better if there is no safety net. Because plan B becomes a safety net. It says that if I fail, then I fall and I get picked up and I have something else there that, was, that will protect me. And that's not good. Because people perform better when there's no safety net. People perform better in sports and everything else if you don't have a plan B. I'm telling you, I've never ever had a plan B. I say I made a full commitment that I'm gonna go and be a bodybuilding champion. I made a full commitment that I'm gonna be in America. I made a full commitment that I'm gonna get in the show business. And I'm going to be a leading man no matter what it takes, I will do the work. I will do the work over and over and over until I get it. And the same was in politics and everything like that. So to me, it is very dangerous to have a plan B because you're cutting yourself off from the chance of really succeeding. And the reason, one of the main reasons why people want to have a plan B is because they are worried about failing. What is if I fail, then I don't have anything else? Well, let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of failing because there's nothing wrong with failing. You have to fail in order to climb that ladder. There's no one that doesn't fail. Here it is. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Now I'm sure in your experiences in school and applying to college and picking your major and deciding what you want to do with life, I'm sure people have told you to make sure you have something to fall back on. Make sure you got something to fall back on, honey. But I never understood that concept, having something to fall back on. If I'm going to fall, I don't want to fall back on anything except my faith. I want to fall forward. 
I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. Fall forward. This is what I mean. Reggie Jackson struck out 2,600 times in his career, the most in the history of baseball. But you don't hear about the strikeouts. People remember the home runs. Fall forward. Thomas Edison conducted 1,000 failed experiments. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Because the 1,001st was the light bulb. Fall forward. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks, and I'm sure you've probably heard that before, but I want to talk to you about why that's so important. I got three reasons, and then you can pick up your iPhones. First, you will fail at some point in your life. Accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. There's no doubt about it. In the acting business, you fail all the time. But here's the thing. I didn't quit. I didn't fall back. I walked out of there to prepare for the next audition, and the next audition, and the next audition. I prayed. I prayed. And I prayed. But I continued to fail, and fail, and fail. But it didn't matter, because you know what? There's an old saying, you hang around the barbershop long enough, sooner or later you're going to get a haircut. So you will catch a break, and I did catch a break. You, you know what you're supposed to do. Deep down inside, I think everybody does. A lot of people just don't go after it, you know? And like most people start out and say, I want to be a this, but I'm going to get that to make sure I have something to fall back on. Yeah. And what you're doing is you set yourself up for failure because you're going, there's a possibility that I'm going to fall back. And when you put that out there, then you fall back. But if you just say, hey, this is what I want to do, and you go do it, you usually get your stuff the way you want it.